Hey guys, today's Saturday, October the 7th of 2023. I wanted to go over natural gas and I'm going to go over it uh, in the next couple of days. I uh, got back from vacation with my family. Man, did we have fun. Ooh, you could probably hear by my voice. I sound very, very tired. Uh, but I woke up this morning. It's like 7, woke up around 6, 6.30. And I was just itching to get in front of the computer to see what's going on. I mean, I've been tracking some things while I was on the uh, on vacation, but that will be at night once everyone fell asleep. I will turn on my laptop and just kind of glance at what's happening in the market. So I wanted to give you a little, a little thing today and kind of build it up over the weekend. So it's not going to be like a long video, but it's just kind of things I'm noticing. So we're going to start off with our spectrum cycle analysis on the daily chart using five years of data. And if you're aware of those are the numbers I use, uh, the daily cycle has a cycle of 251. And this cycle, as you can see right here, uh, hit a peak somewhere around August, you know, uh, this is always shifting. So now it's August 15, uh, that week, or r roughly around there. And so you can see, I'm kind of losing my practice here with these charts. This cycle hits a low uh, somewhere around January, pretty much January of 2024. Now, what can we dissect? There is a technique called composite where you take two cycles, two good or important cycles, and kind of get a projection of what could possibly play out. We don't know exactly if it's going to play out in the future, but we kind of, you know, estimate. And there's another uh, uh, dominant cycle, which is 77. It has a strength, a good, a good strength. And when you take the uh, 251 and the 77, this is what you kind of get a projection. Uh, hit a peak here around July 18th. Looks like it was just kind of going flat here. And it pulled back in. We know we hit a October, I mean, August 11th high. And then it kind of just kind of went flat right here in this little area. And actually, you know, right here was that September 6th. Kind of got a little bump. Pulled back. And now we're hitting this little peak right here. I'm not saying anything is going to play out, you know, or it's just going to ignore it. But it's just something at least for you to know and be aware. So this composite. Uh, is showing a possible turning point around uh, next week, somewhere around August 12th, August, I mean, I don't know where I have August. Um, maybe I was just thinking about the August 11th high here. Um, October 11th, around there, 12th, 13th of next week. Just keep an eye on that because this composite of these two cycles now go down and then they hit a low around December, but it peaks here. And this was a nice little, you know, pop. It's really surprised me. I thought we were going to, Actually, you know, kiss 302 and then go back and uh, fill the gap fill and then just kind of either go sideways or shoot up. But it just decided to, you know, go up, which was very interesting and took out the 302. So that's that's interesting right there. Took out these two highs and I was pushing out. Some might say, yeah, well, you know, it looks like maybe this is a breakout from this, you know, consolidation pattern. You know, it could be. I won't rule it out. That's, that's technically what it's doing. Uh, but we we'll just look into uh, different things. I just wanted to show you what I'm observing. So keep an eye on the daily for maybe something cooking around here. And if nothing happens, you know, and it wants to continue pushing higher, hey, more than merrier. I'm, you know, I'm long, so it doesn't bother me. Uh, but I'm just telling you things, you know, the possible headwinds that could be coming out in the future. The members of Traders Report, interesting. Large uh, commercial. Let's uh, take out. Retail commercial is now at 61,763. So we took out this low. I look at this chart as candles in a weird way. You might think oh, that's strange. Well, that's how I got my mind around this. So I'm, I'm looking at it as numbers taking out lows and taking out other numbers. And we just took out, uh, you know, 61, 66. We got this low of 55 that commercial haven't taken out yet. If commercial takes out 55, 
then that means natural gas is going to get some Momo to the upside very strong. Uh, and that's the target I'm looking for commercial to see if they're going to take it out in regards to position. Now, large speculators have taken out their high of the July 10th, which is 86. Look where they're at. 79. Uh, yeah, 79. 79, 86. They've taken it out. Large speculators believe natural gas is going to go higher. So they are committed and they got skin in the game. Commercial haven't taken it out yet. They're kind of iffy, which is interesting. So large, uh, large speculators have more conviction that natural gas is going to go higher and they're betting on it. They're putting their money in there. While commercial hasn't taken out that 55. So we got to keep an eye on this 55 at July 10 low. If we take it out, then things could really start escalating. Looking at our energy sector, you can see, I don't know if you've noticed this, but I want you to keep an eye on this and put on the comments if you ever noticed this, or maybe in the future, let me know. But look at crude, they pull back. Our Bob, our Bob has been pulling back big. Heating oil now is starting getting a big pullback. Ethanol is just kind of hanging in there, but look at natural gas. Interesting. So from what I'm seeing, and I noticed this maybe a couple of times, not all the times, and not consistent. But when crude and everybody else gets a nice deep pullback, natural gas just gets a momo. And then when crude gets some energy to the upside, natural gas just pulls back. So I don't know. Put in the comments if you notice that. Or now that you know that I'm noticing it, keep an eye on that and see if you notice the same thing that I'm noticing. It. And when you do notice it, just put a comment on my video. Be like, hey, it's happening. I don't know why, why I'm, I'm noticing that, but I just wanted to bring it up and just let you uh, observe that, you know, for yourself. Okay, so this is uh, my uh, trading view chart, and I'm going to cover a few little things here. Uh, I wanted to show you uh, key things. I haven't covered Elliott Wave stuff in a while, so I figured I'd give some Elliott Wave guys some love. As you can see, according to this count, there's a Wave 5 that ended in that uh, April 14 low of uh, 194. And from there, it has done an A, B, C. Maybe this is going to be a C in the future. It hasn't adjusted or counted it, but it has an X here. And there's a target of like 338 around there and change. So maybe it's forecasting that that could be, uh, or in that level, a uh, possible target. See this uh, super trend indicator? Uh, it has a price of 355 for the conservative tra traders, the more conservative traders, not the more risky or more conservative. Uh, if we could get above 355, that indicates that on the weekly uh, time frame, Things are looking bullish. So conservative traders would normally use more on the weekly charts just to avoid all this chop and all this noise. The riskier ones would jump in here and kind of try to pick bottoms and swing lows. and Because you're at the bottom of the barrel, so anything here could probably work out until, you know, things start moving. So riskier people will come here. Be like, all right, maybe it goes to 144. I don't really care. Because I'm, I'm holding long term, you know. But uh, conservative people, traders want to wait for at least some kind of breakout or some kind of trend. So this kind of gives the uh, conservative uh, traders a little more like, hey, keep an eye on this. So keep an eye on 355. Uh, let's go to the daily chart. See what's cooking there. So on the daily chart. Um, we have a wave, you know, came down here. We have a wave five. You get that A, B, C. And from there, it just kind of, this is your C. From there, we've just been going sideways. And somewhere around, uh, you know, you could say from the change of contract, September 26, we got this nice little pop. And that gap fill, you know, if you remember my last video, I was like, yeah, you know, it could probably pull back, fill it up, and then 
shoot up. And it didn't really play out that way. It went sideways and got more Momo to the upside. Very interesting. As you can see, we've been in a buy zone on the daily uh, ever since uh, June 16th. It almost took it, you know, took it out here to go, you know, short and never switched. And it continues on buy. While the weekly hasn't triggered yet, it's around 355. Once it hits that, then that's going to be on a buy. We know the weekly cycles are up. We know the dailies are fluctuating, but the daily obviously is down to December. Uh, somewhere around here. December. The daily cycle, which is two, I think it's 251, 241, bottoms out here. And doing the composite of the, uh, I think it's 251, 241 with the 77, there's a turning point of those two cycles hitting somewhere around October 11, 12, around that. So you got to keep all those little things in mind at the same time watching price action, see what's doing there. Uh, another thing I wanted to cover. I don't know if you've seen my last video. Well, I've done a couple where there's a theory that uh, from a sh you know sell off like this, you got to give it time to consolidate. Like time and time. Uh, so this big move down should be equal in regards to time to consolidate than to do the next move higher so i wanted to show you a way where you could you know verify these things so what you do is you take let me see if i take this off you take that high at 1002 and you could do two things you could either go by this low right here that february 22nd low and then what you do is that's the time it took for this move to end you know, kind of, this one is one of those things is like, okay, so did it really stop here or did it really stop here? I'm going to show you both. You need to use both. You don't know which one is the one that's going to apply. But once you use both, you're going to pick up on some, some nuances. I'm just like, oh, what about when I use this one, I see this. And when I use this, I see this. So we're going to start off with this low here, February the 22nd from the high. So what we're trying to find out it took all this time for this big crash dump to finish. And then from here, it's just been consolidating. A lot of choppy, yeah, fake, 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 sideways, now breakout. So what you do is you take this and move it and pivot it to that low. So what do you notice here? That from here, this is this time equaled to here and from here you can see that we kind of pulled back it almost looked like it was gonna you know crash and, and maybe test that low but it kept holding it somewhere around here september 26 we're getting now this breakout so in one theory we use this pivot this time and this time here are equal so the consolidation should have ended right here now let's go back and let's take uh, this move again. Because maybe we're not too sure that that is where the move consolidation, I think the consolidation ended, or not the cut, the move downward really ended on April 14th. So if it was in this one, the 22nd of February is April 14th. Because then from here, when you got a fail new low, or maybe, you know, it did, it did dip lower, but then from here, it really stopped and just started going sideways. It really wasn't pushing lower, but really wasn't really taking out the high. You know, you establish your high here, and you establish your low here, and it did pull back a little bit. But then from here onward, you really didn't take out the high. We were close on August 11th. But to get close to 194, you never really did it. Or as close as I could see it getting down there. This could have probably, probably would have happened, but it didn't. But now things are changing. Now you took out the 302 high. You're at 333. So what you do is 
you do the same thing. You move it and you uh, pivot to that April 14 low. Where does that take you? December. Ooh. What, what rings, this, what bell does uh, December ring? The daily cycle low. So, could it be that maybe this is a dead cat bounce somewhere in the future and then we're really going to dip in? I don't know, but the consolidation from this move here to here ends here. This big drop in time really ends here. So, I don't know. Those are the little things you need to, you know, be aware of and see what happens. But there's something cooking here in December. And from what I see, the daily cycle bottoms out there. However, we know that the weekly cycle is still up. So, a couple of things just to keep on your radar.